Welcome to School Matters. I'm Joni Kopis, and I'm very excited today to talk to Mr. Tony Orr, our superintendent of Hamilton City Schools. So we welcome you again. Oh, great. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been here before. All right. You got one year down as our superintendent. So let's reflect on your past year. What did you like, learn? Well, first of all, the community is what's impressed me the most. Mm -hmm. Is it's the, it's the largest small town I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Everybody has been welcoming to, to not only myself, but my family. Um, the students are, are wonderful. Uh, and quite honestly, probably one of the, the, the things that we need to embrace the most that I think is our greatest strength at Hamilton City Schools is our diversity. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm impressed by everything our students accomplished. Um, and certainly I, I'd love to speak to that because we had a, over uh, 300 scholarships that the class of 2016 earned, over $8 million in scholarship monies. And uh, their accomplishments continue to impress me. Um, and, and quite honestly, the diversity of our programs is another key asset that I've learned about Hamilton City Schools. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing I've learned, and I've been doing this for 24, 25 years, I suspect, is the dedication of our staff. And when I say our, our staff, I'm talking about our bus drivers, custodial maintenance, for heaven's sakes, the way our food service uh, personnel greet our students. The teachers have been in already over the summer. During the whole summer, they've come in to get their rooms ready for the next school year. Mm -hmm. um, and then certainly there's the administration that, that uh, offers key support as well. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, it's just, uh, it's, it's refreshing to be part of a team. Well, and you talk about the impressive students. In the class of 2016, um, we attended the Top 20 Luncheon, of which Correct. TV Hamilton was there as well. But there's some very impressive aspirations of what these students want to do. Absolutely. Well, 30 of our students uh, are actually enlisted uh, to join the military. Uh, some of them, as we sit here today, have already gone off to, to be part of the military. Um, we also had two standouts, Alexa Schmidt, who's our valedictorian, and she's going to be headed off to Yale soon. A Sean Riggins is headed off to Indiana State University. Um, and then certainly there's a, a Christian Halcom, who has a, f a full scholarship to West Point. Mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't come without the hard work of the students, the parents, and the, and the faculty mm -hmm. here. Yeah, very, very impressive. And you attended your first Hamilton High commencement with 500 graduates all dressed in blue, so that had to be exciting for you. It was. To, to be at Miami University and surrounded by students and families that, that are excited about and hopeful about the future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think those are the keys that we have to focus on. And I know I heard a lot of positive comments from parents and family members when you attended the citywide string fests and band fests. Again, TV Hamilton was there, but impressive the number of students playing instruments and also the family members that attended. Well, the, the facilities that we have here are second to none. So when you walk in Hamilton High School's gymnasium and you see it surrounded everywhere you turn with families and the students are ready to play their instruments on the floor mm -hmm. two different days in a row, um, the sacrifice and dedication that everybody makes to be there is, uh, it's just inspiring, right. and the kids did a great job. The directors were phenomenal, um, and we really produced some great music. Yeah. Um, when you mentioned the staff too, I mean, we have to give some shout outs to the custodian and maintenance staff at Hamilton High School because they had to get that whole thing laid out with the tarps and what have you, and it's, it's a big production. It is, in, in fact, I would say that without their help, we wouldn't be as successful as we are. Mm -hmm. They provide a, a warm, welcoming environment uh, not only for our, our, our students, but also uh, our parents and our community. Mm -hmm. uh, because we even worked with Rotary mm -hmm. this year and did Rotary Presents when we also presented Shrek. So uh, again, a, a way to partner with our community. Mm -hmm. And that's what Hamilton City Schools is about. Right. And last year, our NJROTC, they weren't too shabby. They went to national competition. Absolutely. Florida. They went to a national competition. In fact, They've been to so many competitions, it's, it's funny. It's, it becomes a routine announcement at every board meeting mm -hmm. because they're always going somewhere. Right. But then we also had success with our students who are in Teachers Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we had about eight students go on to a national competition there as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, I, obviously, I, I kind of lean towards supporting our, our teachers and mm -hmm. future teachers because eventually somebody has to take over when we're gone. Right, so, right. So they're our future. 
And then it's always funny because every summer people said, oh, it's a summer, schools aren't busy. But in reality, it's, it's, I always say it's a different kind of busy. You had your two-day administrative retreat. Absolutely. Well, I liken it to, of course, you need to know I'm a, I'm a big-time Ohio State Buckeye mm -hmm. fan. That's okay. Uh, well, well, good. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, so I always think about what Coach Urban Meyer has to do to prepare his team. Mm -hmm. And although what happens on game day is important, the practice that we do beforehand is, is especially important as well. So we had an administrative retreat because we are reviewing the data that's come in from the next generation state test. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, anybody who's ever spoken to me knows that I, uh, I'm not necessarily a big proponent of state testing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's kind of a, it's kind of a shame that 40 uh, days out of 178 are spent on state testing. Right. Um, I wish it were back uh, uh, like when we went to school where you had to take an Iowa test mm -hmm. and our teachers were allowed the creativity to teach us. Well, and I think some of the frustration is not only the amount of testing, but the constant change. You know, give us what we need to know and then leave us alone for two or three years, but it's constantly changing every year and that's tough for mm -hmm. districts all over the state. Well, in my time, uh, you know, in my time in education, it started out with what we called the Ohio proficiency test mm -hmm. and then they went on to the, what they called the OAA, then they went on to PARC and OGT, and now we have the air assessment. So you never know what's going to be next, but it requires us to retool. Mm -hmm. um, so, but again, what we do, I, unfortunately, we're a victim of the times. Mm -hmm. um, so we work within the parameters that the state gives us, and our teachers do a phenomenal job doing that. Mm -hmm. Although I do think this, the state test is more a, of an indicator of uh, the socioeconomic status of a community and not so much the performance of students because certainly Alexa uh, Schmidt going on mm -hmm. to Yale, Justin Halcom going on to West Point, mm -hmm. that doesn't happen by accident. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm, again, uh, especially proud of our kids. And when you talked about your retreat, yes, they, they looked at the test scores to plan strategies for next school year, but you always like to talk about your three R's. Yeah, I, I've always believed in rigor, relevance, and relationship. Rigor means we've got to make it challenging for the students. But really, at the end of the day, what we want our students to do is to be adaptable, flexible thinkers. Mm -hmm. As far as relevance, students, well, for heaven's sakes, adults need to know that if they've been given a, a task, a homework assignment, a test to prepare for, how is it relevant to me? How is it going to help me in my future? Mm -hmm. And then as far as relationship, we're supposed to care about each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm reminded of that daily with our students and our staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why you like going out to the schools because it's so easy to stay in your office, but you really need to go out in the schools to see the students to realize that's why we're here. Absolutely. I, uh, you know, quite honestly, this year I've been to all of the buildings multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it when I'm invited to, to read to the kids, interact with the staff. Um, even to, I went to Bridgeport Elementary and they were doing uh, Covey's Leader in Me. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a project that they've embraced. Mm -hmm. And to just see the students leading and, uh, and being successful, again, reminds me that we are being successful. And why we're here. Exactly. Exactly right. Absolutely. You, we talked about you know, reviewing the test scores and planning strategies for next school year. To that end, we have two new instructional leaders at Central Office, right. Danielle we, and, and Rick. Danielle and Rick. Danielle Romine comes to us from uh, having about 20 plus years experience uh, in, the, in the classroom as, and as an administrator. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a uh, presenter at local, state, and national uh, levels, uh, specifically as far as uh, reading strategies. And let's face it, in today's, today's market, educational market, students have to be outstanding readers. And that's what she's bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, she has the ability to, to analyze data and help come up with strategies that are going to be meaningful. Similarly, Rick Pate is coming to us. Uh, Rick's had an, also an interesting career. He's been in education over 15 years, uh, serving as both a teacher and an administrator. Mm -hmm. and. Rick's going to be taking on the task as the director of secondary education, and he's going to be working with the middle school, the, fre the middle schools, mm -hmm. the freshman building, and also Hamilton High. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be looking at not only their test scores, but it's also what goes on daily. Right. We have to look at that, those formative assessments that we have mm -hmm. to figure out what we need to do to help each individual student. So we'll continue on with the professional development. Absolutely. In fact, one of the things, uh, I'm not sure when this will air, uh, but uh, one of the things we're going to be doing soon, the Board of Elections announced mm -hmm. that they're holding a special election on September 13th, and uh, I anticipate we're going to have an announcement as far as 
students may or may not be attending school. I'll mm -hmm. know soon mm -hmm. after I sp have spoken to the board. Right. Uh, but if that's the case, if, if they did not, then we would have professional development for our staff that day. Right, because even though you're you know, either a first-year teacher, 30-year teacher, you're always learning. <laughs> you know, soon I'll be 50 years old. <laughs> And, uh, and I uh, continue to learn every day. Sure. Um, it's amazing what I don't know. Right. Well, until one of your children tell you, right? Ex exactly. Uh, we talk about, you know, education and instruction, but we know technology in today's society, technology, it enhances the learning and teaching. It will never replace the teacher, but it surely does enhance. Well, one of the things we're doing, and, and we couldn't accomplish what we're doing without the community support, mm -hmm. but we are doing a one-to-one uh, -one technology device uh, uh, program mm -hmm. and it's going to be at grades 7, 8, and 9 initially. We hope to expand it over time mm -hmm. and really what we want to do is put technology in the hands of our students. Um, for them to be successful and compete in the 21st century, they have to have those skills. Now don't get me wrong, I think with everybody doing Pokemon Go, uh, that, that <laughs> certainly has its place, but to be able to, to analyze a spreadsheet uh, to use uh, you know word processing skills but more importantly the ability to use research on the uh, internet and assess if it's reliable and valid right those are huge things that they need to, to know mm -hmm. uh, given the amount of information that kids have access to now it's important that we teach them how to use it responsibly right and again being comfortable <clears throat> with technology because all the say testing is online uh, so not only do you have to know the content but you have to feel comfortable enough. You know, you look at your little, your elementary <clears throat> students, third, fourth graders, you know, they're just trying to manipulate the, the computer, much less the content. Every once in a while, I'll see on Facebook, someone, a parent will post, uh, why aren't we teaching cursive writing? Mm -hmm. The reality is, with the day that we live in, mm -hmm. we need to be teaching keyboarding, probably at the preschool and kindergarten levels. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's the new reality. Right. Um, because again, by the time the kids are nine years old, they're taking online assessments. Right. Well, another thing this summer, you know, we, we you know we look at the old the test scores. They come in, you know, early early summer, or obviously after school's out. So we're looking at that. But in the last year, we've worked on a new um, facility, the service and operations facility. So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, the old location, quite honestly, <laughs> I, it was dismal. Mm -hmm. um, I think was... it started out as vocational classrooms. Oh, did it? Okay. Back in the 1970s. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Mm -hmm. Well. It, it was certainly it was, time. it was certainly old. It was time to move on, and with again the support of the, the board, the community, mm -hmm. we were able to break ground ten and a half months ago on our service and operations mm -hmm. facility. Um, and quite honestly, it's a, about twenty-two thousand square feet. It houses over eighty employees for transportation, food services, custodial, mm -hmm. maintenance. maintenance. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just an outstanding facility. Right. And it's also added to the value of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as, as we continue to collaborate with our city leaders, um, the value that Hamilton City Schools has brought to the city uh, can't be understated. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is yet another feather uh, in the city's cap. Right. Well, it's, it is a beautiful facility, well deserved for those four um, departments. We recently had a ribbon cutting and a dedication. Correct. And you were kind enough to be there, say a few words, and then welcome everybody in for a tour. So let's go ahead, TV Hamilton was there as well, so let's go ahead and watch a little bit of the ribbon cutting. Uh, we began this uh, process about 10 and a half months ago, and if you've ever had the opportunity to visit the old bus barn, you'll realize what a professional upgrade we're, we've given our, our staff and our community. Um, this 22,000 square foot facility is going to house transportation, food service, custodial services, maintenance services, and obviously transportation. Um, the 80 employees are going to be blessed with having professional facilities, and it's just another feather we can put in the city's cap as far as the great transformation that's, that's gone on because of not only Hamilton City Schools leadership, but because of our city's leadership. Today I want to thank our Board of Education for being here and being supportive and encouraging as we go through the process, as we go through Conger Construction, and all of you for turning out here because together we're going to continue to make Hamilton City Schools and Hamilton a special place to be. So having said that, it's time to cut the ribbon so that we can take off our suits. Okay, good. <laughs> <clears throat> Whew. Or at least your jacket. Yeah, at least the jacket. So here we go. Everybody step up. Everybody step up. You got to pull it taut. And then count of three. One, two, three. 
Hi, I'm Larry Knapp. I'm the business manager for Hamilton City Schools, and you're here today at the official ribbon cutting and dedication ceremony for our new service and operations facility. We're starting things off here today. We are in a state-of-the-art bus wash for our buses, our transportation system. It's a stationary system with, uh, you can see the brushes on the side when the buses pull in. They're rinsed as they come in. Soap is applied to it. They pull up into this front area. They sit here and soak with the uh, chemicals and, and soap that is on them. And then when they back back out, that's when the brushes are activated and it's rinsed and voila, we have a new clean 60 foot bus. We have Mr. Jeff Kilby, our uh, maintenance director down there, helped us with this build. Wave, Jeff, nice to see you. Excited to have this. Uh, at our other facility, all of our parking area, all of that was all gravel. So now we're, we have close to uh, two acres of asphalt out here now for our busing and uh, makes for a much nicer, cleaner facility and a better facility for the buses as well. Here we are out in the uh, bus parking lot. As you can see, we have parking for 64 buses out here. At last count, uh, we had 55 routes. We know we're adding routes this year because of our expanded preschool. We were driving close to 5,400 miles a day, which is a lot of driving, a lot of crossing of railroad tracks in this city. So our, our drivers do an excellent job of keeping our students safe, getting them to and from school every day, all year long. I'm actually standing in the main drive uh, coming in from Dixie Highway. This is where all of our buses re-enter into the lot uh, after their day's trips. As you can see, our facilities uh, have a lot of, of safety precautions. Uh, this gating system is a big plus for us to uh, help us keep our fleet of buses safe that we have so much money invested in along with uh, cameras and detectors, motion detectors, and those types of things. When buses come in uh, after normal operating hours from a field trip, maybe a, uh, an athletic trip or something like that, obviously the facilities are going to be locked up. All of our employees have badges. Our driver's badges will operate these gates. Uh, when they drive up in the bus, they just reach out of the bus, put their badge in front of the badge reader, and that will open up the gates for the buses to come in. The drivers won't even have to get out of the bus to open up the gate. Once they roll through, there are magnetic, actually electromagnetic coils in the uh, uh, asphalt which tells the gate that there's no longer a bus there and the gate closes behind the bus as they come in so it makes for a very safe and secure uh, facility for our drivers not only during the day but then also at night uh, when we have other activities going on as well. Here we are in the heart of the facility this is actually the warehouse area and uh, as you can see, we have all kinds of supplies that we use for the, the course of the year, all of our maintenance supplies, uh, paint for our athletics, floor scrubbers, washing machines, uh, tow motors. That area right there that's wide open right now is going to be filled with uh, supplies as they come in for the start of the school year. Then we have all of our other supplies, our our plows and blowers and all those things that we use for the maintenance of the uh, facilities with all the buildings down in the corner of all our day-to-day uh, -day bus supplies for keeping our buses clean and operational as well. Up on top we have more storage uh, up in the mezzanine area uh, keeping bus parts and, and seats and those types of things up there. And here in a minute we're going to go through these doors down here and go into the service bays for our maintenance men. Now one thing our maintenance men have never had is actually a work area, an office area for them to do their paperwork in. 
here at the uh, new service and operations facility. They have their own little office area, a laptop, printer, uh, copy machine, uh, just to do those necessary paperwork items. And they can do it in a clean environment. So let's take a look at these three different facilities that we have available in here. Here we are in one of our three uh, maintenance bays. This is our carpentry bay for our carpenter. Uh, as you can see, he's well equipped with uh, new machinery that we've uh, been able to bring in to the facilities this year. Uh, we also have another uh, bay next door for our plumbing and HVAC. And then also uh, our electrician's bay is behind us also. But they're all about this size and it's, it's nice because they all have their own inside outside access and their own facilities to do what they need to do when they go out to the buildings. Here we are in the front of the service and operations facility. These are our administrative offices uh, for our four directors that run uh, all of our services starting with our maintenance director's office and then our custodial services director's office. As we go down the hallway, uh, we go past the conference room and of course our food service and then down at the very far end is our transportation office. So let's go down and take a look at the driver's meeting room. Okay, here we are on the last leg of our tour here this morning at the service and operations facility. We're in the driver's meeting room. Uh, as you can see, it's probably the, the biggest room that we have up in the front part of the, the facility. Uh, we have to get uh, our 54 drivers all in here one time for their meeting space. And we have obviously have more tables and chairs for them. But they have their lockers here on the left side to keep their personals in. And then, of course, mailboxes here across uh, also. Our, most of our drivers are with us. Uh, for the duration of the day. By the time they come in uh, from their morning routes, a little bit later, they're getting ready to go back out. Some will be doing preschool school routes. Uh, we have midday kindergarten routes also. So we have drivers coming in and out here all day long, and that's why we have the kitchen facilities for them as well, so they can eat their lunch and do what they need to do and get back on the road for the afternoon trips. A nice facility. Absolutely and one of the things that I would like to do is commend Larry Knapp, our business director, mm -hmm. for overseeing the uh, the project from uh, the start to finish. Mm -hmm. He and his staff did an outstanding job making sure that we had quality for the money that we were spending. I remember when we hired Larry last year, our board members who this was their, their saying all throughout the construction, we want it on time and under budget, and I think he did a pretty nice job. Well, he, he accomplished both. Not only were, were we on time, but we did spend under the allotted dollars. Right. And Larry's seeing so many other projects right now. Mm -hmm. We're redoing the uh, baseball dugouts at Hamilton High. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to look at other parts of our facilities that need attention mm -hmm. um, because we have to make sure that we honor and protect mm -hmm. uh, the investments of our community. Yeah. We have to be good stewards. Right. And he did a great job showing TV Hamilton the various components of the of the facility. So you know the 65 buses, they go like 51 routes. Um, so it's it's like I said, well deserved and good for them to be in that nice location. Absolutely. So talk about you know partnerships and what have you. Something that was your vision, and I, I know you don't want to give credit for it, but you and the board really felt a need to work in our preschool, starting students early. Let's talk about preschool. In order for our community and our students to move forward we have to start thinking earlier. And it really it really matters about kindergarten readiness. Mm -hmm. um, prior to my arrival, we were serving a, approximately 320 students. Uh, the Butler County ESC had some programs where they were servicing students as well, but still it wasn't reaching the total population. So we have kids that, that are out there who are being underserved and when they get to kindergarten, they're substantially behind. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we wanted to do was form a joint partnership to figure out how we could at least provide more opportunities for our students. Mm -hmm. And this is just a, a transitional phase as we talk to our community in the future about some of our needs. Mm -hmm. um, but the partnership involved the Butler County SC, the Butler County United Way, 
the Hamilton Community Foundation, and also uh, the Presbyterian Church, mm -hmm. because we had to find uh, a physical space uh, to have these additional uh, children receive preschool education. Mm -hmm. Together, we agreed that we would, we would collaborate and that we would have a successful program. Hamilton City Schools, and I have to really take my hat off to the Board of Education, mm -hmm. they agreed to provide free transportation and with our own preschool program within Hamilton City Schools, free tuition. And one would argue big. It, it's huge because one of the problems we have is there are barriers mm -hmm. to education. If kids can't make it to school, if parents work or they're unable to drive, how do those kids get to school? Mm -hmm. And in this day and age when kids have to know so much more, so much more quickly, mm -hmm. uh, that's a key. And I hope that we expand that. In fact, as far as just facilities expansion, it's amazing to me as I look at the history of Hamilton City Schools that when we built our schools back in 2008, mm -hmm. a study had been done mm -hmm. and uh, they had projected, and when I say they, the state, mm -hmm. the state had projected that we were going to have about 8,800 students. So we built buildings according to their projections. Right. That's what we had to do. Right. Now we're faced with having over 10,000 students, which is great because we can reach more students. Right. But the problem is, is we're limited with our facilities. So right. when we look at expanding preschool programs and doing the other things we need mm -hmm. to do, we're really going to have to talk to our community uh, and, and solicit their input on some of the ideas that we're going to have in the future. But preschool is definitely on the radar. I think it's the one item that will really make a difference mm -hmm. over the rest of, of my career mm -hmm. on seeing our students be successful. Yeah, as you said, start, start early. Absolutely. Because we have 10 classrooms in four of our buildings, both morning and afternoon, and then the Hamilton Early Learning Center, that'll offer about another 120 students, preschool students. Correct. That so, that, opportunity. so that puts us right at about 440. Mm -hmm. um, but when you consider a class size is about 800, mm -hmm. um, that's only about half. Right. That doesn't even address three-year-olds. Right. Um, so we, we need to keep studying uh, to see how we can make a, a positive difference. Right. And again, partnerships, and you made reference to that at the beginning, you know, as you see the community, everyone is rallying around this, the schools and the community on the resurgence. But another partnership that we started was with Primary Health Solutions, with the school-based health centers. I couldn't agree more. As far as what Primary Health Solutions has done for not only our student population, but our community, is they've allowed us to open a school-based health center at Garfield mm -hmm. uh, Middle School. And what it seeks to do is to provide medical care uh, for students and community members. Mm -hmm. Uh, again, we looked at trying to eliminate barriers. What if a student is clear across town and is ill but can't make it to the center? Mm -hmm. Well, the board, again, has uh, graciously allowed us to purchase school vans, mm -hmm. and we're even able to transport some of those students to Garfield to make sure that they're taken care of. Yeah. Because you can't learn when you're sick, right. you can't learn when you're hungry, and you can't learn when you can't get to school. Right. So those are things that we've done. Another partnership, even though I already mentioned the Community Foundation, mm -hmm. they continue to be strong supporters. They were one of the partners in that project. Right. Uh, but they also partnered or continue to partner with us regarding the YES program, mm -hmm. uh, allowing us to have an additional counselor at the uh, high school. Mm -hmm. And this counselor's main function is to help first-time first college goers mm -hmm. uh, get, into, get into to college. Right. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's heartwarming to know that you have that level of support in Hamilton City. Yeah, because it is hard to navigate, you know, with all the college applications and what have you. Correct. So sometimes you need that extra support. And I think the beauty of the school-based health center, as you mentioned, it's for students and families, but it is truly a community. It's open in the summer, even when school's not there. So it's a nice um, center for the whole entire community to, to take advantage right. of. Right, and, and they have not only vision, there's dental coverage, mm -hmm. and then there's uh, full health care. Right. So again, it's the whole gamut of services yeah. that our community needs. Right. That's perfect. And again, looking at, at next school year, you know, we've, we've got about well, close to 90, I think, new teachers. Correct. Um, as we mentioned, several new administrators. Um, another exciting thing coming on this school year is let's talk about the high school band. Oh, uh, quite honestly, the idea of of having a field trip to Hawaii. Yeah, that's one, tough. It, it's tough, and one would <laughs> one would wonder, well, is is it wise? Well, you try to look at expanding opportunities for our students, mm -hmm. and the students have raised over twenty thousand dollars to go. 
Uh, we're looking at between 70 and 80 students were able to attend. Mm -hmm. And one of the purposes of them going there is the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. So what is the importance of history? Sometimes I think we lose focus on that. Mm -hmm. And to have our students go there, showcase their talents, mm -hmm. but to also learn uh, firsthand some of the historical facts that, that went on there right. um, is going to be something they'll remember for a lifetime. They're there, over th I think, over Thanksgiving break, and there's a parade, and they bring back some survivors and, and different people. So you're right, what an opportunity for them. Well, interestingly enough, I, you know, you even told me before we started today about the class of 1941 mm -hmm. coming back to, to Hamilton um, and bringing us a check, a donation, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, they wanted to use it to plant a tree. Mm -hmm. And I share that because our December graduates... December 7th, 1941. Right, our graduates come back. 1941 mm -hmm. is obviously uh, something we'll always remember. Right, right. Um, and I think it's, it's a special memory for our students. Right. Well, it sounds like um, it's a great opportunity for the band. I know you're really working hard to be a, a chaperone. I don't know how that's working, <laughs> but it is a great opportunity for the for the students and family members of people right. that could come there. And um, again, you know, we we really believe in field trips. You know, you learn a lot in the classroom, but you also learn a lot with um, you know real life experiences. And I would agree. The only caveat I would put on that: the field trips have to be related mm -hmm. to what our curriculum and standards are. Right. And as long as we have that nexus, I think it's valuable. Right. Well, it sounds like you, you survived your first year. I yep. was quite impressed. Got a lot of on our plate for this uh, school year. That is correct. So we'll be back to talk about what else is going on soon. I look forward to, to talking with you again. That's great. And for TV Hamilton, I'm Joni Copas, and we'll see you next time on School Matters because school matters. <music>